What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about a few different topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 6 once again. We'll be talking about Jeepers Creepers 4. We'll also be talking about Megan and then we'll also be touching on the Harry Potter TV show that isn't confirmed but just talking about the future of that franchise at IP. Uh, just to kick it off with Scream 6, um, Melissa Barrera has hyped up the gore in Scream 6 with a new comment during a Collider interview recently where she was hyping up her new movie Bed Rest. So with the last Scream, this is her quote in reference to Radio Silence, they, she's talking about the gore. With the last Scream, they were tiptoeing and trying to be very respectful of what the franchise had been up until that point and keeping their inner gory dreams at bay. With this one, they were like, we're going all out. So again, she's of course referring to Radio Silence, that being Matt and and Tyler uh, and I'm aware that this has had already some people concerned about this overall product because they think there might be more gore than story keep in mind just because movies up their gore doesn't mean it's going to turn into a Halloween kill Halloween kill scenario or something else where you might think it's all gory or just gore with no story behind it you know a time of horror that we thought we have left behind because that's really what a lot of horror movies used to be like but now we're getting a lot of things where we can see that horror is able to tell a lot of compelling stories we have seen in the past even when we were still in an era where it just seemed like it was all gore with no real story to it you have movies like the shining you're still able to put on a very gory scary film that features some very nasty sequences, but the story is still quite well written. You still have some great character development because it's possible to have both. And Radio Silence has proved that that can happen with Ready or Not. The stars have also already mentioned in the past that there will be some more character development this time around, especially for someone like Tara Carpenter, who from seeing what we saw while they were filming, she's up and around. She's interacting with the cast. Jenna herself has already hyped it up how she'll be getting to interact with Mindy, Chad, getting to see that interaction with her sister a lot more as, as far as like her just not being bedridden so i wouldn't i don't think this is something for us to just write this movie off with just yet wait for it to come out see if it actually is all gore no substance i don't think it's really going to be like that but we'll see just to touch on jeepers creepers 4 jeepers creepers 4 director uh timo Verinsola sat down with lay james the s the, the effects designer responsible for the new creeper look i guess and this is from this interview is from halloween i i just want to discuss it now because there are some very interesting interesting things that i thought was funny and very interesting in this interview now keep in mind timo himself again he seems to be the one doing the interview I, I'll, I'll you'll get to why i said that down the road so it seems that the producers jake seal and terry bird were also highly involved with this redesign of the creeper that many fans would argue was not necessary which i would agree really was not james also explained this during the interview herself that they were heavily involved with the new look of the creeper and why it looks like this now the most frustrating bit from this interview is the idea to connect this to part two was decided after filming had started so they had no original plans to connect this to part two it was just decided on while filming had started or after filming had started which is like that doesn't really make sense to me because the storyboard art well i guess the storyboard art had included something that they were thinking about not doing until they decided yes let's do it while they were filming it's like bro so you clearly already see there was a lot of off and on things that weren't set in stone i'm picking up on that from reading this interview that they just did not know what they were doing completely while they were even filming so they they also said that they had no original plans to do the wings digitally they want to do it manually but timo insisted on them doing it digitally they think that it came out good and i'm like no it didn't also if timo is the one conducting this interview i'll leave a link to it when you read this the way james is expressing this she's talking as if timo isn't even the one conducting the interview she says the director is the one who came up with this if Timo is the one asking her the questions, why is she wording it like this? I'm going to leave a link to this interview for you guys to see what I'm talking about. Because if Timo is the one conducting it, the response comes off like the director was someone else. <laughs> someone besides the person interviewing her. All I have to say is if this IP returns again, please just bring back competent filmmakers. Uh, I really just want to touch on why you guys had a different look of the creeper and who was responsible for those digitally terrible looking wings in the fourth movie. So just to jump into Megan, Megan dropped a second trailer today. And let me just say that the inclusion of a beat drop when she started dancing was chef kiss. Honestly, I enjoyed the second more than the first. Megan's efforts definitely remind me of 
the trailer itself in the movie overall the efforts from megan it remind me like of pat from smart house if you remember that movie growing up like what if pat wasn't the disney channel movie and how chaotic that movie could have been if pat were allowed to be a killing machine like what megan clearly is so far i believe that the dynamic between megan and her creator gimma would be the most compelling aspect story-wise the trailer was basically more of what you saw from the first one with some new additions like we see the doll with messed up hair at one point the dance sequence is, is extended slightly we see uh, we see her, what I can only assume would be her slitting someone's throat. I'm ready to see, see Megan. I'm ready to meet her. I'm ready to watch out for these new first reactions that come out today because I will will do a video on it tomorrow morning because it's going to be after midnight by the time the reactions come out. So I'll just do a video very early after midnight and I'll have it pending for you guys to see it early in the morning. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, are you excited for Megan? Why or why not? You can let me know down in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the second trailer for Megan? If so, what was your favorite aspect of it? Again, I like that beat drop edition when she started her dance sequence. I like that they gave her a beat drop to dance to. That that made that dance sequence entirely better and I can see people already turning that into a viral clip going forward before the film is even out. So just to conclude this by talking about Harry Potter once again there is no new announcement on Harry Potter or any new series or movie coming out Fantastic Beasts definitely seems to be dead on dead in the water they're not going to move forward with it but again stranger things have happened you know with the whole Ezra Miller debacle again the financial struggles that the movies are having I guess in their eyes they don't want to invest in this series anymore they want to try to recreate or bring back the boy who lived in some capacity or at least a story connected to him now recently the Warner Brothers TV boss Channy Dungy had a comment with Variety, I guess, in this recent article that came out last week. She said, I wish I could tell you that something was on the imminent horizon, but there isn't a lot of there. But there is a lot of interest and a lot of passion for it. So absolutely. What's great is that you see how the audience is so engaged and so ready. Our unscripted team did a fantastic return to Hogwarts special for HBO last year. Yes, they did. That resonated so tremendously. Then we did a quiz show, The Tournament of Houses, that Helen Mirren was the host for. The audience is ready. They want to go. So we're just to figure out what the right next step is. I'll tell you what the right next step is. And shout out, I don't I don't have your uh, Twitter handle, but you know who you are. I'm, having, I'm drawing a blank on your name right now, but you gave a very good idea. Rework the cursed child into a TV show but make it about Lupin's son. Make it about Tonks and Lupin's child. And somehow factor in Harry into this. Since Harry is that kid's godfather, I would love to see a cursed child reworked into a more compelling storyline. Do that. That's what I think your next step should be if they actually get to make this Harry Potter TV show. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.